Hello friends and welcome to another Popper League. Today we're going to be trying something fresh. We're going to be playing Hot Dogs. So this is a deck that uh, has seen a little bit of play recently and a little bit of variation, but basically it's a mono red Kiln Fiend deck. We're going to be using the, uh, the Threatening Elemental Beast along with some other creatures, in this case Burning Prophet, Growing Crusader and Seder Hoplite. And we're going to be combining those with uh, some very efficient red spells to be able to boost their power and hopefully get the win fairly quick. Uh, one of the reasons why I chose this list in particular, because like I said, there's a lot of variation in uh, these lists right now. Um, the reason I picked this one is because it had a lot of creatures. So... We have 4 times 4 16 creatures in the list, so we should be able to fairly easily find um, some threats to be sticking onto the battlefield and get some damage through. Played Demir Fairies in Modern? Yeah. I mean, personally, I've never had a super high opinion of Fairies and Modern, but uh, a lot of people disagree with me, and Spellstutter Sprite is one hell of a card. So it'll be a race, then. Land, 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 give me a land. I want to play my Kiln Fiend. Let's draw a card. No land. Well, we drew three cards. Figured odds were we'd get a land in three cards. There we go. So do, you, do we play the Kiln Fiend? I think we do. Wow. And we have to discard two cards? We are in so much trouble. And a Gurmag Angler.
They're playing around mutagenic growth there. All right, is their last spell a burn spell? Yeah, it is. Don't think we're gonna get too much value out of our sideboard here. I guess we could bring in Gorilla Shaman to try and destroy their lands, but that's not too much value. is on the mulligan here. Just come in for one this turn. Next turn we'll get better value of our spells since both of these creatures can attack. Turn two, Kitchen Imp. Pretty good. Getting kind of land flooded over here. Oh, Fists of Flame are going to be amazing here. All right, so that's uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 damage total. Seems like a good turn. Smack. One, two, three, four. Seems like death. Soupy, thanks for the follow, friend. Turn four on the play, pretty good.
I think that's pretty respectable for a pauper deck. A little bit slow, especially on the draw. But I don't think we can mulligan it. Our opponent's mulliganing heavily here. They're down to five cards. Pretty bad for a burn deck, but the Madness deck does have some okay card advantage. In the sense that uh, they're able to draw cards as they're casting their spells with their blood tokens or faithless looting, making their lightning bolts, fiery tempers, into cantrips. Modern Horizons 2 sealed, yeah. They really uh, did a really good job with the uh, Modern Horizons. Uh, Modern Masters was really good for sealed as well. Or just limited, rather. Got a lightning bolt for that kitchen imp. That's a lot of mountains. Chainer's Edict. Good one. Let's kill that kill that kitchen imp, get that scry. Uh I mean it's better than a land. I guess we'll top it because we want to keep the kiln fiend alive. And we'll leave this last mountain in hand so that we can potentially discard it to a Faithless Looting. No blocks. Uh, I guess we'll give it some brute force. Set up the scry for next turn. A little bit aggressive though. I might get punished for this. Uh, another Apostle's Blessing. Oh no, that's the worst. That life gain is definitely helping them out. They've gained six life. There we go. That's a card.
Get to scry before we draw. Scry that to the bottom. Super good. Mutagenic. Sweet. Okay, so that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 13 damage if I cast this. I think we probably just attack with Kiln Fiend then. No, because this isn't going to be able to kill us. Whatever they draw, it's not going to be able to do 5 damage next turn. Although if we cast this, we could die. So we probably just leave the Mutagenic in hand. Attack for 7. I'm not going to block this. It has trample. Kitchen Imp. Probably attack with it. Do they attack with the Epicure, though? No. Okay. So this kills us next turn if we use it. Brute Force. <sighs> I don't know, Shauna. I mean, gaining that six life. That could be the difference here. All they need is a spell on top and we die. I don't think this is lethal if they block. They're going to block here. And now the Mutagenic is a dead card. Another Mountain. Yeah, that's true. We, we were definitely flooded. Fortunately, they drew a land here, so they might have to just hold back the Kitchen Imp. That's super good for us. Nice. Well, I think that just got us the game. Because they're empty-handed. Another mountain. <laughs> oh, God. We got super lucky on that one. Opponent flooded with our flood. Like, if they had actually drew, drew spells, we would be dead. Then again, if we had actually drawn spells, it would have been a game. Mull that. Alright, at least we got a creature this time. I mean, what was it? The Kiln Fiend had Trample, right? So we just Mutagenic the Kiln Fiend. So we'll keep this, get rid of Brute Force. Ah, I see. Usually I'm the slow player. Not this time, though. Might have something to do with them double queuing.
Might be the match for end the festivities. Ooh, this is going to be troublesome. So ideally, I would like to cast the Ancestral Anger on the Hoplite next turn. So I guess I could cast the Hoplite and have it still have Brute Force up. Am I supposed to be the control deck here, or am I still aggro? My hand looks pretty aggressive. Fiend. Yeah, it's like Red Infect, except we gotta do 20 instead of 10. You know, classic Red Deck wins kind of thing. Hey, Titan Rising. Uh, we're playing Hot Dogs. Oh, that's wide board. Protection from green looks pretty good, though. Cheers, Titan. Hey, Gabby. Good morning.
Yeah, so Sean, I haven't spent too much time thinking about um, Pioneer, to be honest. Has anyone built that deck? Yeah, it's okay to ask what time zone I'm in. Um, Atlantic time. So for me right now, it's 7.30 a.m. Exactly. Hey there, handsome. Good morning. So that's six, seven, eight, nine. Cool, cool. Yeah, let me know. Oh, the Eldrazi spawn can block the Kiln Fiend. Good thing I caught that. Oh, well, thank you for uh, using Celsius. I absolutely do not understand Fahrenheit. Unless, of course, you know, minus 40 is the same, so I know what that is. Yeah, that's so weird, handsome. It's mixed, right? Like, when I think about my weight, it's in pounds. When I think about my height, it's in feet. 5'12", by the way. But, you know, temperature, Celsius, distance, kilometers. Oh, you worked the face-to-face -to -face tour in Toronto? Oh, that's awesome. How did you find the city? It was very cold, yes. Yeah, that is uh, accurate. One of the things that um, I actually like about Nova Scotia and Halifax in particular is the snow doesn't stick around. So, like, with Toronto or Montreal, you get a lot of accumulation, so the snow just, like, rises and rises and rises. You get these huge snow banks. Um, but here, the snow will disappear um, within the week, right? So, you get a big snowstorm, and next week it's gone. Yeah, don't shovel until you check the forecast. Could just be a waste of your time. Well, it's going to rain in about an hour, so... Yeah, well, I mean, like everything, temperature is kind of relative, right? So 11 degrees Celsius, that seems like uh, fine spring weather, but um, unless, you know, you, you're prepared for it, 11 degrees Celsius is pretty cold if you're wearing uh, shorts and a t-shirt. Ooh, Shauna, you got the Guide the Raid points. Go ahead and redeem it immediately. Let me know uh, who you want me to raid, although I got a pretty good guess.
as long as she's online, we'll raid Amaranth. You got it. Oh, handsome. You're right. I guess uh, we're going to miss it. That's all right. Uh, I don't like Lana Bear said that she was going to be doing it shortly. I don't know if uh, she'll be ready for it today, but next time. Hunger of the Howl Pack. Target creature you control. Okay, that happens. Okay. I'll keep that in mind, Shauna. Oh, no way. Another hunger? Oh, my God. That's pretty good. Yeah, Lana Bear is pretty cool. Oh, Gabby, you're brushing up on your French. Very cool. Are you uh, taking lessons or... Do you have uh, some friends that you can speak French to? Very nice. Oh, well, I guess we're dead. Don't see Stompy too much. Yes, we must finalize the festivities. <laughs> yes the poutine classic food quebecois Ooh, gut shot. That's a pain.
No, handsome, no. I didn't have lunch today. Oh, that's pretty good. They got a blocker now. Oh, well, that's uh, good of you, Handsome. I know a lot of people were very excited to just rip the mask off. First Kate, first chance they could get. But, uh, I don't know. Personally, I, I kind of see it like as a sign of respect when someone is wearing a mask. Eldrazi spawn is actually super good. Keeping us from being able to uh, Apostles Blessing name green. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Gabby. You get it. The mask is to protect other people. I, I talk to people at work and they're like, Oh, you're wearing a mask, so you're fine. What are you complaining about? Sorry, it's it's a thorn in my side. I don't like to bring that kind of stuff into the stream. So let's see here. We're doing a four or five damage here. We could do another three more to eight. I don't think that's worth it. Just kill their critter, save our critter. Another Eldrazi spawn token. There's the Rancor, so they're going to be clocking us. With a creature we i mean we can block it with this one but uh why block when we can attack uh do i play any other video games sure do Elden Ring is at, the, is at the top of my list right now. Uh, I just saw that Little Nightmares 2 is on sale, so I might pick that up. What about yourself? Hmm, this invader sticking back as a blocker, huh? Well, we can't block that, so uh, I guess we could, technically. We'd use up a lot of resources to do so, though. I love that. Let's get rid of these Eldrazi spawn. 
Civilization cool. Been playing some stuff that was recommended. Nice. Anything that uh, you're excited about you want to share with the chat? Uh, I don't think we need another creature right now. I think I'm more looking for spells. Popper is love. Popper is life. Uh, I guess that's just lethal, huh? I guess they could technically have... Um, yeah, we'll just attack in and kill them. Persona 5, okay, heard good things. Fallout New Vegas, very cool. Elden Ring's incredible. I've been hearing a lot of good things about LEGO Star Wars as well. I like how they um, basically like redid the game um, so that if you had played the previous LEGO Star Wars games, it's not like um, a bunch of content you've already played before to buy the game. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. I haven't uh, been too into Pokemon since I was a kid, right? Like, I played Red and Blue. Um, but, I mean, that was, that was pretty much my Pokemon experience. Just the OG. Careful not to hit F6 right now, because we know they have access to Gutshot, and we have access to Mutagenic Growth. Oh, well, that's cool. Unless they have, like, a rank or something here, I think they should have attacked first. I guess it doesn't matter, because Quirion Ranger untaps the Nettle Sentinel. Haven't seen any savage swipes out of the opponent yet. Expecting them, yeah, to untap the Nettle Sentinel, replay the forest. Hit Skulk. That's a pretty good start from the opponent. I don't want to play this other Hoplite this turn. So I'll probably just go in for a single Brute Force. How much damage is this? I mean, four, five. That's five. Plus another four is nine. Plus another six is 15. Oh man, that's so close to death. Might be able to just kill him next turn.
There's that savage swipe. So we can make this thing into a 4-4 four, four, so they trade. But then we don't get the mutagenic growth on this thing next turn. Pretty good. All right, so they have nothing to block. Fortunately, we don't have that extra mana to brute force. Maybe we'll draw it here. Ugh. Well, we could gut shot kill that. Doesn't really do much for us. That's five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, they can. Untapping their 5-5 five, five would have been pretty good, actually. But it would mean they wouldn't have two mana. I'm kind of thinking about just gut-shutting this now so they won't have access to the mana. Down a three. They got a block. We get a land. All right, so that's three. Uh, is this lethal? Three, six, seven. I think it's lethal. No, we don't have enough life. Hold on. Let's recalculate this. Because if they block... Seven, eight damage. Ugh, they're going to block it. And we don't have enough life to be able to kill them. We could hold back and block this one. So close. And this is the part where we practice patience. Now 
if opponent was playing a more complicated deck, I think they would time out. But uh, they chose the right deck to be double queuing with. Oh, shit. Forgot how that works. I need to brute force this thing before the block step. That's embarrassing. Uh, the hand's a little bit slow, but we'll try it. Hmm. Basic mountain from the opponent to start. One drop creature. A mountain. Oros Garrison, okay. And nothing. Put down Kiln Fiend, we have Mutagenic Growth for protection. So we can protect it from a single Lightning Bolt. Cool, they're playing a Synthesizer deck. Reveal Synthesizer. Love Synthesizers the deck so much. Okay, they're going to play the other Synthesizer. Ooh, and reveal Glint Hawk. It's a pretty good flip. They're going to lose some value on the Synthesizer for whatever shows up now. But uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, so they lose that Glint Hawk. We're going to do a ton of damage, though. Land again. Alright, so how much damage is this? Because we get to cast Fist of Flame, Apostles Blessing, and Mutagenic Growth. So that's three spells, which is uh, plus nine on the Kiln Fiend, so that's ten. Eleven, twelve. Thirteen, fourteen. That's a lot, but it's not lethal. Let's see what we get with Fist of Flame. Lava Dart. Ooh. That's pretty good. That might be lethal. We can get the Glint Hawk out of the way. Uh, so hold on. So that's 6, 9, 12, 15, 17. Put him three. But then we have shields down on the Kiln Fiend. Maybe we just Lava Dart the Glint Hawk out of the way, hold up the Mutagenic Growth, and then try and kill next turn. Uh, why do I have Trample? Fist of Flame. And yeah, we could trample over the Glint Hawk, but I want to keep the Mutagenic Growth to try and save the Kiln Fiend from a Lightning Bolt on the opponent's turn. There's a Rebirth. Oh, um, reveals Blast. Okay. Fortunately, Blast doesn't kill the Kiln Fiend. They don't have three artifacts. If they did have Metal Craft, Mugenic Growth wouldn't be able to save the Kiln Fiend.
And unless they have removal, I think this is GG. I guess they could have a white creature, and then we can't give the Kiln Fiend unblockable. Oh, Radiant Fountain, that's pretty good too. Yeah, they do have a white creature. Okay. Spell, please. Nice one. Oh, Ancestral Anger. Six, eight, or is it nine, ten, eleven. So I think mutagenic and apostles' blessing just wins, right? Protection from red. They block with this. Prevent two damage. This is six, seven, eight. Eight plus six is fourteen. So that should be that should be fine. Another turn four kill. All right. Respectable. Seems like end the festivities would be good here. Apostle's Blessing is so-so. Like, they have um, two colors of creatures, so it doesn't give our creature unblockable, but they also do have a lot of removal, so it's going to be good for that. That is a lot of lands. Opponent's mulliganing, though. Hey, stream team. Oh, don't like that. I think I'm going to lightning bolt it immediately. One drop? Ugh, mountain. That is the fate of the Seeker of the Way. Gets bolted. Ooh, Relic. That's an interesting choice. of flame all right we'll put down the kiln fiend pass the turn back we got bruce for brute force to protect the kiln fiend if we need to 
Looking forward to casting Fist of Flame next turn. Probably hold a glint back block to back to block. Lava dart, okay. It's gonna be a ton of damage. Hey boss. Um if you're on the play turn one, how much is Fists of Flame for? Oh, thanks, Drac. Come on. Uh, hit for 12. Put them to 8. Gonna need some draw some gas though. Oof. That's not a card I wanted to see. Seeker of the Way could uh, bring him back into this game. I don't think they have only lands in hand. Wow. So they have. um. What's the name of that card? Uh. Prismatic strands in hand. That one is not a good reveal. I guess they could have had that card as well. That's a possibility of what they have in hand. Good draw though. I guess if they have Prismatic, it's uh, not that great, but we'll see. Yeah, they wouldn't have had Celestial Flare, because they would have cast it. Oh, wow, they just let that go off. If they had Prismatic, I would have figured for sure they would have cast it. Celestial Flare... Just need a lightning bolt. Too bad we only have one of the deck.
How about a creature? We got a bunch of creatures. I, I would like to draw a creature, please. Yeah, you're right. Bolt's not enough. Puts him to five. Uh. Critter. There we go. Oh, nothing I can do to save it. Could cast Fist of Flame to draw a card, though. Keep those in hand for Faithless Looting. That's four. Almost there. We have one more Lava Dart in the deck, plus Lightning Bolt. There's a Critter. Faithless? Oh, another mountain. Putting all three in front. Only well, gonna get one damage in on them. At least we get rid of all the critters. Put a stop on our upkeep so we can lava dart and set up our draw step. I think they have something.
Well, this would be really good as long as they don't have another um, Celestial Flare. <sighs> another Flare. They have so many flares. How many flare are you even playing? Like, and it's a really bad card with um, Synthesizer. Kind of shocked that they have so many of them. Uh, that might be death on our side. Seeker of the Way is a problem. I guess we could block Seeker, give this protection from white, and then they don't gain a life. Ooh, get rewarded on that one. Uh, no, we're not running any pingers. Ooh, Helix. So we can fizzle this spell and then Lava Dart. And that kills this thing, but they're still going to gain three life. We could, we could Lava Dart this, get a creature, fizzle this spell, and then Apostle's Blessing this, and they gain no life. I've been looking for creatures.
Oh, they have another thing. Another Foundry Helix. Oh, they're going to gain the four life from the Foundry Helix, but they won't gain anything from the Seeker. Where computer just crashed. I hope that means you get a break. Need some spells, need some spells. Need for the opponent to not get any spells. Ooh, hoo, hoo, that's a good one. Mutagenic, top that. And draw land too. Top that. All mutagenics. Nice. Whew. That was a sweat. And there you are. Hey, Mr. Rabe. What's good? Oh my god, if we could play Gataxian Probe in this deck. Probe did nothing wrong. Ooh, okay. get that one point of damage in I didn't think they would block that's too important to lose for them <laughs> yeah it's a free card you get to see what's going on yeah, the card was too good you're right I miss it though I miss it in modern too. I had picked up the uh, the promos 
just a little while before it was banned. Get that sneak attack damage in here. So that would be 9, 12, plus another 4, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, that's off by 1. I guess just kill all their stuff here. And then play another Crusader. Uh, this is probably death. Oh, yeah. All right, so we're playing against walls. Uh, I think we're going to want end the festivities, and that's probably it. Um, they do actually have some creatures that have one toughness, so this might be actually able to do some stuff. Maybe we'll just bring in two of these. I like the Apostle's Blessing because they basically only have green cards. So Apostle's Blessing is giving our creatures unblockable. I think the Acroan Crusaders are actually a little bit weak here. Because basically everything can block them no problem. Going wide isn't too bad, as we saw there. But more importantly is uh, getting large. Uh, yeah, we're going to mulligan this one. And crash number two, handsome. You got to tell that uh, computer to shape up. All right. Um, our opponent is mulliganing as well, but only to six. Keep this... Is end the festivities going to be good? Could be really good or it could be basically dead. Maybe we get rid of the second kiln fiend.
Hey, Faithless, not bad. So we can get rid of festivities with Faithless if it's no good. Hey there, Jim. Um, so the first thing that I would ask, um, I would like to know a little bit more about what kind of style of deck you enjoy. So in some other format, um, modern would be the one that uh, I would understand the most. But uh, what are some of your some of the decks that you really enjoy playing? Ooh, Brute Force, that's interesting. So Brute Force is plus 6 to 11. Mutagenic is plus 5 to 16. 17, 18. And if they don't block, they just die. Could just go... I don't think they just die. Uh, we could just go with Faithless here, try and find some more Mutagenic. So close. Put them to one. Give me that end the festivities back. Should have done some calculating there, some basic math. Maybe I could have seen that I was going to leave them at one and end the festivities, which is just going to win it. As is, I'm just going to hit F6 here. So you're a limited player, no big devotion to any style. Um, okay, so let's see here. Um, one of the decks that I would really highly recommend would be Mono Blue Fairies. It's a very strong list, and um, it will actually give you a lot of cards to be able to expand to the other Fairies decks, because there's quite a few variations for that. Uh, Burn is a very solid option as well. Oh no, they have a thing. Moments peace.
Yeah, Boros has some very interesting decks. I was just thinking about um, some decks that would be a good way to start to understand the format or to be able to build towards some of the other decks that exist. Uh, Bogles can actually be a pretty good deck for that because um, like your plan is just going to remain consistent. You don't really have to worry too much about it. And then from there, you're going to be able to uh, sign blocking order. That's fine. And then once you learn the format, you're going to have, be better able to um, decide where you want to go from there. The bottom with you. We'll either cast Moments Piece or we'll get some trades here. Okay, we get some good trades, kill a bunch of their walls. Although, all those Axebane Guardians, that's really scary. What do they reveal? Wow. Just a casual draw four for two mana. Yeah, Drac, exactly. But some people just like... Boggles and Burn are, you know, like, Ananthema. Um, they, they just don't want to touch it at all. So I like to um, be able to present another option as well, like Mono Blue Fairies, which is going to be a little bit more complicated, um, a little bit more difficult to get into the format, but um, the cards you have for Mono Blue Fairies uh, will allow you tr to transition into a lot of other decks. And I mean, Mono Blue Fairies isn't too complicated. You play fairies and you turn them into ninjas. And counter everything the opponent does. So they have Unbound Mana. They've already used Drift, though, so I don't think they win this turn. Yeah, if I had counted properly, I think we would have actually just won. Okay, yep, we're dead. That moment's peace. Ugh. That card is so good. Oh, all the Fists of Flame.
keeping all their mana up here could have some way to prevent my uh, the damage from my attack. Woman's peace. Well, at least we got a soldier out of it. That's a problem. And they have three defenders, so this can recast Moments Peace. So they'll have to cast the Moment's Peace now, I think, to save their uh, Alchemist. Get Mutagenic. All right, hopefully we aren't dead. Because we very well could be here. It's Axbane Guardian. Plays Axbane Guardian. Okay, this is looking up. Got a ton of damage potentially coming through this turn. Nice. I think we might be able to steal this. I think I should probably cast Fist of Flame free combat on a Kiln Fiend because we have potential sorceries we could pretend we could we could draw and cast. I don't think it really changes anything. Uh, it makes whichever one they it makes their blocks better. Alright, so let's see here. This is so much damage but yeah if I use Fist of Flame first then they can block the one I don't cast it on how many sorceries do I have not very many I have five sorceries I think it's better to do it in combat then
Nice. So this should be lethal. Nice. Uh, yeah, this one looks fine. Yeah, yeah, I really do appreciate that, being able to have a, a, a deck that uh, I don't have to throw away because it's lost all of its value. Actually, I ended up making a, um, a dice box out of my old heroic deck from Standard. That was pretty fun. Some people get really angry when they see it. <laughs> what? Oh, I can't believe you would do that. You destroyed those cards. Some of them have value. Yeah, like less than a dollar. Most of them are, you know, worth pennies, if that. And the amount of enjoyment I got out of having that custom deck box, or sorry, not deck box, dice box, was pretty high. Oh, we're going in for some damage here. HNDK, hello? I did not want that. All right. Get angry, Crusader. Do I want the Kiln Fiend? Seems pretty good. Could do with all these without all these extra mountains, though. Maybe uh, faithless looting would be good. Hmm. Another ancestral anger. Cool, cool. And, or artifacts, top. If we... Hmm... I guess we just give this protection from artifacts and laugh. All right, you're at one. I have three lethal threats. What do you got? Don't you dare cast Cannonade. All right. So I guess we'll bring in Gorilla Shaman and raise the effigy. What do we take out in this matchup?
Sparakadu, thank you for the follow, friend. a lot of creatures maybe maybe we don't want this many creatures Yeah, I don't know. The Prophet has seemed really, really good. Especially with the high land, land count that we're running. Being able to um, get rid of some of those top cards has been really good. Wrong order. I needed you last turn, Hoplite. Where were you? I'm going to bluff that we have mutagenic growth here. Just in the sense that I'm not hitting F6. Oh my god. Yeah, no kidding, right? That would still be fine. I would play this for one mana if it were a 1-1. One, one. Gonna hold up the Apostle's Blessings to potentially save our critter from a, um, a Galv Blast here. <laughs> uh, no spells, all creatures, all the time. They're going to be so relieved when they only take the two damage. Okay, no cannonade. That's good news. Don't know how many 4-4s four they're going to put down, though. A lot of 4-4s. Four that sucks.
Now we're losing. This is how you lose a game of magic. <laughs> yeah, that, those are some dead dogs. Keep this. How about a pair of shenanigans? I mean, we're already playing, um, what was the name of that card? Raise the Effigy and Gorilla Shaman. Like, we've got six cards for Affinity. And Raise the Effigy is uh, seems like a pretty good card for this deck where we get the choice of destroying an artifact when we need to or just killing them. Imagine if Monastery Mentor were red. It would, yeah, it would be in this deck, obviously. I mean, we have access to Majoring Bully, but Majoring Bully doesn't gain life. All right, so they're keeping at seven. Hey, it's all good. I uh, definitely appreciate the uh, the suggestions, just because you know. It. I don't think it quite fits. Doesn't mean that uh, I don't want to hear about it. We'll just practice patience again for a little bit as we wait for our opponent to uh, allow us to attack. There we go. Let's get the Kiln Fiend down for maximum damage. Let's try and get a big hit in this turn here, if possible. Ah, uh, the Galv Blast, too bad. Muta. Another anger, we'll keep that on top. Yeah, I definitely respect shenanigans as a good option for Popper to be hitting artifacts, but 
there are so many options in red to be hitting artifacts. Like a braid, for example. Pretty hard to compete with that. Hmm, this wouldn't be the worst. I kind of like uh, that, actually. Let's let's grab that mountain. Already, already got one. Lava dart, nice. Yeah, we'll keep that on top. So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, potentially. Yeah, this is very nice with looting. And I mean, so is anger. We could just go Fist of Flame Brute Force. But if we get land, I mean, Faithless is kind of awkward here because we're going to want to cast these two cards. So I think Faithless in this case probably isn't it. All right, let's get a scry here, see what we have on top. So that's eight, nine, ten, eleven, put them to one. Or we could just kill the frogmite. Always off by one. So many times off by one damage.
Well, they already have a Frogmite in the graveyard, plus Mirror Enforcer, so... Kark Clan, that's pretty good. Gonna have to Faithless look for Lightning Bolt. Lava Dart would do it as well. Okay. Guess we go for it and hope they don't have Hydro. We could go for it on their upkeep. I don't think that changes anything. Like, if they have a counter spell, it's going to be Hydro. Let me check. Uh, it's been a long time since I've played Affinity. I don't even know if I have any. If I think I deleted all the Affinity lists because they are all banned at this point. They did have Hydro. Reckoner's Bargain, Gain Two Life. Ouch. And draw three cards. Okay, that's a good one. Deadly Dispute. This game is slipping away from us. Kind of surprised they didn't go for Blood Fountain there. Put some creatures in play. Deadly Dispute. Okay, that's pretty good. Actually, I didn't think about that. The treasure... Uh, treasure's pretty good there. I think we still have it. Uh, so that's four, five, six. Minus two is four. Because we have Trample.
No way, they have something else? Get out of town! Oh, man! What a game, though! I think this one's over. I don't know about that donut. I think going for it was better. It was a really good opportunity to win the game. And they gain seven life. GG. Cool games. All right, so this is the deck that we were playing today, and um, gotta say, really, really enjoyed it. I think that, uh, as I was saying before, uh, I would definitely like to change the land count. Um, going down to 18 lands and getting a second Faithless looting, I think would be a pretty easy choice. Um, otherwise, I liked everything that was going on here. The uh, the one-drop creatures to be able to get some aggression early and um, the heroic definitely works very well with everything else that we're doing. And then the Kiln Fiend and the Burning Prophet uh, kind of do overtime as they're getting boosts alongside our heroic creatures so we get to target the heroic creatures and these things grow too um very very fast very aggressive uh protects its creatures fairly well yeah um i would definitely recommend this deck if you're looking for a deck to play with kiln fiend if you're looking for a mono red deck this one might be it